you know, you have the man with just taking a step back and looking at it. We had a, a lot of diversity. I think a lot more than people maybe even were expecting. We had quests come out, and then we had Death Knights, and then Legendary Weapons. But even within those expansions, a lot of different mechanics. And now Witchwood is introducing Rush and Echo. Uh, you know, just talk a little bit about the inspiration of Witchwood and how we got to this point. Sure, yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on in Witchwood. The inspiration really comes from the flavor side, that we wanted to do a spooky set. We talk a lot about Hearthstone being Tales from the Tavern, that you've got a bunch of people from the World of Warcraft, and they're hanging out, and they're talking and telling stories. And Witchwood is, what if they were telling ghost stories? What if instead of mm -hmm. telling you know, normal adventuring stories or scary stories about the undead army up north, they were telling ghost stories? And right. so Witchwood captures that spooky vibe of the witch in the woods and the werewolves, the worgen in Gilneas that fight back against that. It's it's very monsters versus monsters, and so that's what we wanted to capture. And so we have Echo, which is very much that spooky deja vu type feeling. You're wandering through the woods and you see something just out of the corner of your eye, and then you see it again and you see it again, and that's that's where Echo comes from. And then Rush is to capture the the ferocity, the the speed of the the worgen. And so they're they're moving quickly. They can attack minions the turn they come out, and then. Beyond that, we've got the odd and even cost stuff. Right. So two of the legendaries in the expansion, Gan and Baku, play into what if your deck is only odd cost cards? What if your deck is only even cost cards? And then your hero power is better. It's either upgraded like Justicar or it costs one mana. And those are huge deck building hooks. You can build all kinds of crazy different things with that. Yeah, I think people also were talking about the mechanic of start of the game. So that way, you don't necessarily have to feel like you have to draw it in order to make your deck work. If you're going to build around it, you want to necessarily get that uh, consistent effect. So I think people were really receptive to that idea, especially since you're making a pretty big sacrifice. People compared to like the princes, for example, from Knights of the Frozen Throne. But if you're going to be you know, missing mana cost on all the even slots or all the odd slots, you better be able to compensate by having some consistency with that. Right, exactly. It's comparable to Reno Jackson, where you have the this incredibly big deck building restriction but a very powerful effect mm -hmm. and so with Reno you had to draw the card and so games were were very swingy Reno is inherently a very swingy card where either you draw it or you don't draw it right. and so with Baku and with Gen we wanted to reduce that swing a bit to say you you did the deck building thing you mm -hmm. put in only odd cost cards you put in only even cost cards now you get something awesome every game Right, and then uh, we had one other mechanic that was introduced that was, you know, really fun, which was a flip in your hand. We had the pumpkin peasant, which was a three mana four two, but also became a two four depending on what turn you held it on. Yep. And that was kind of was, was that the transformation, the werewolf kind of becoming something else. That, that that part of the haunted lore. Yeah, exactly. It's it's the worgen transformation. They they all start out in human form, so they're the low attack, high health version, and then every turn they're in your hand, they flip into the the werewolf form, and then back into the human form, and then back to the worgen form, and so on. All right, awesome. Well, that's just a, a recap of what the Witchwood is so far. Today we have a list of cards that we're just going to reveal for you guys as well, and this is just a card reveal stream. We're not going to be playing games ourselves, and we're just going to try to get hype and explain what's going to be happening here with the Witchwood. So with that, do uh, you want to just look at the first card here? Yeah, let's, let's get started. All right, so this is a Hunter card. It's a legendary Houndmaster Shaw. Four mana, three, six. Your other minions have Rush. Very simple, very straightforward, but very powerful effect, it looks like, uh, because Rush seems to be, you know, everyone knows how powerful Charge can be, but even just controlling the state of the board, um, sometimes Hunter used to do that in the, in the past anyways, just so they can push more damage, like more of the mid-range Hunter decks uh, as opposed to the aggro ones. Sure, yeah, it's very much in the Tundra Rhino space where you, all your other minions can attack the turn they come out, Uh it's a little bit cheaper than Tundra Rhino, a little bit bigger than Tundra Rhino, and it works on non-beasts too. So right. if you've got some some poisonous minions, maybe it's really good with. Uh, if you've got the Spellstone on five, you get enormous support. Oh yeah, support the Spellstone with this can be pretty insane because all those can immediately start attacking other minions. Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, yeah, p people look at this, they think Tundra Rhino, they might even uh, kind of rem get a reminder of the Wars on Commander days having other minions with fast abilities. Th this seems really, really powerful. And so when you look at a class like Hunter, which naturally wants to push a lot of tempo and, and pressure, but w when you utilize the rush mechanic, what are you looking at specifically when you're designing a card like this? So we wanted to have Rush in a couple of particular classes and say, okay, Warrior, Hunter, these are the classes that are really good at Rush. And so this is a card that makes Hunter really good at Rush. Mm -hmm. That it's a 4-mana 3-6 already, that's a pretty good body, that's 
basically vanilla stats, and then also you've got you've got a ton of other minions that can attack the turn they come out, and so this this says Hunter is going to be doing the rush thing. Hunter can be good at that, and so that's a that's a cool place for for Hunter to be for this expansion. That's right, and, and I'm looking at ways that's open ended too. It doesn't specifically say you have to play very aggressive or even very defensive. There's poisonous minions that you can use, really small ones that can get rushed, and it's not just your other beasts, your other minions. So that opens up Hunter to maybe not have to be so dependent on just beast synergy all the time. Yeah, absolutely. If you're doing death rattle things, it's great. If your death rattle yeah. minions have rush, because then you get their death rattle effects immediately. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that that's another place you can play into it. Uh, How Master Shy as a character is also cool because he's from the adventure mode, from the monster hunts. He's going to be right, one of the okay. classes that you can actually play there. Right. So you'll get to you'll get to play as Houndmaster Shaw and go through the the adventure. That'll be really fun. I think so. And, and uh, this looks to be a really solid card too, and not necessarily a contested mana slot too. I know Hunter struggled to even right now put stuff at four mana very reliably. So this seems to fit pretty decently in an open ended spot. Yeah, it's an exciting card. It's. And it's just fun too, right? It's nice when you get to play your minion yeah, and then and attack with it. Yeah, you get to you get to do things. That's what hunters should be doing. Should be more on the pursuit, uh, you know, options. So sometimes you want to chase down those kills. So again, I think Hunter Master Shaw, pretty uh, solid legendary. I'm really excited for that. Yeah, this card's cool. So uh, with that, uh, you want to introduce the second card? Here? Yeah. So Hunter Master Shaw is is one of the adventure guys. He's one of the kind of heroes of the Witchwood. He's he's kind of a bounty hunter that's going out into the Witchwood to find scary stuff. So what kind of scary stuff do we have in the Witchwood? We have Rotten Apple Bomb. Five mana, four or five neutral card. Taunt. Death Rattle, dis uh, sorry, Death Rattle Restore four health to your hero. Um, yeah, wow, really solid stats. Um, very mid-range card. I think the first card that sticks out to me is... Um, the fact that there's an Antique Heal Bot and Sludge Belcher in Wild, and how at 5 mana they were very defensive, gain around 8 to 9 health mm -hmm. uh, around that range and still fight. Is that kind of similar to what this card is role trying to fill? Yeah, this is kind of a cross between the two, right? Mm -hmm. This is a 5 mana, 5 health taunt, and then when it dies, it gives you another defensive thing. Sludge Belcher gave you a 1-2 taunt, this mm -hmm. gives you 4 health back to your hero. A little bit like Heal Bot in that it's restoring health if you're doing things like Warlock that are actually costing your health, and so you need to get out of range of, of reach. Right. Uh, it's also a Death Rattle card in case you need to do Death Rattle things. Maybe you're, I don't know, you're doing a Priest quest, or for some reason you need Death Rattle minions. Maybe you're doing a Rogue Spellstone. Yeah, you know, um, I, I guess this just makes me extra sad if I get silenced. You know, it just means that we lose the taunt and the, the four health and just yeah. becomes a vanilla five four or yeah. four five, excuse me. Like Sludge Belcher. Right, yeah. So uh, you got to be really careful if they're putting a lot of silences out to it. Good when the Zoth and Wild. Pretty exciting. Yeah, you know, that's one of the things too is, uh, you know, you know, I want to take um, a step here to not just to talk about standard, but even some of the other formats. Disc is very useful in Arena, for example, if you want to heal and, and put some taunts in your way. Pretty solid. Uh, but then you look at Wild and you're talking about Nazoth. You know, how much do you factor in a lot of these designs when you're looking at not only the new year and rotation, but also what stays forever in Wild? Yeah, it depends on exactly the card. So it's important that Wild gets to stay crazy and that there's all sorts of I don't know, wacky, insane, super powerful stuff that you can do in Wild. Mm -hmm. But it's also important that it stays like a fun format. And so we do definitely think about, oh, this is a cool combo with, you know, with Emperor or with Nazoth or with some card that's in Wild and, and not in Standard. And so, you know, maybe this will promote a Wild deck. Maybe this will make yeah. Wild a little bit more fun and a little bit cooler. Oh, man, the Nazoth, you know, just being able to stay alive for a long time. And there's a lot of heals already in Wild, so I'm really excited to see what this deck can do. Definitely uh, stopping a little bit of those aggressive or tempo-oriented strategies. Uh, give yourself a little bit of time to get through your late-game minions. Yeah, neutral defensive cards are a good thing. We've been trying to put more, like, Tar Creeper in mm -hmm. our expansions. So Rotten Apple Bomb's a good example of if you're a deck that wants to play more of the late game, uh, it's just an opportunity to do that, especially if your class isn't particularly good at that. Yeah, all right. Seems really solid overall. Can't really complain. I think that's what people really want to see, too, a mix of something really exciting. But sometimes the, the, the solid, steady cards yeah. uh, are a really good mix as well. Yeah, and it's a cool, creepy tree. Yeah. Can't uh, go wrong with a tree in the forest. The next card says Apple as well, so I think this sense. might be related. I like that it's very thematic to the Witchwood, you know, haunted trees, of course, and yeah. the, the apples themselves being rotten here. Uh, this card's called Witchwood Apple. Yeah, it's one of those little apples from the card art. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, it's actually just a stretch off of uh, the art card art you just saw. Uh, Druid card, two mana spell. 
add three two two treants to your hand. I'm guessing it's just normal treants that we see off of like Force of Nature, for yep, example. Exactly. Okay. I think they're creepier art, but uh okay. two mana two spookier. two treants. Yep. <laughs> cool. So that just puts uh more resources into your hand. So this is kind of like a long value, but you have a lot of small tokens that you can uh keep capitalizing to your hand. Um, and we're thinking, like, you know, maybe having Mountain Giant in your deck, perhaps? Sure, yeah. If, if for some hand. reason you cared about your hand size mattering, right. then this would be great for that. Um, and I, th I think, like, you know, part of this is interesting because Druid has a lot of things going for it. You have more aggressive strategies that already utilize 2 2 Treants, like Living Mana. And then you have ways you can synergize by buffing that with mm -hmm. uh, Power of the Wild. And then you have, you know, these big spell-oriented stuff. So when you're looking at this kind of card, what what is it trying to... Are you trying to necessarily support an existing archetype, or are you just trying to create more open-ended stuff for Druid? So this is the kind of card that can push in a couple of different directions. So maybe you want a bunch of little minions on the board. Maybe you're doing Savage Roar type stuff, or uh, Mark of the Lotus and Wild, or you've got Direwolf Alphas, that kind of thing, and you you just need some extra tutus. And so this will give you a lot of resources for late game. Uh, maybe you're doing something where the number of cards in your hand matters, like Mountain Giant you mentioned. And so this could push in that direction. And that, that really brings us to our next card. Yeah. Uh, the next card it's is Whispering Woods. Summon a 1-1 Wisp for each card in your hand. Witchwood so Apple, pretty good. That was, that's pretty good synergy with Witchwood Apple. That's really good synergy with the Mountain Giant we were kind of talking about. Um, or even, like, Sea Giant. So if you're, like, playing Sea Giants... I mean... Giant's Druid sure. is uh, pretty prominent in Wild, or the fact that Giants can be played really powerfully in Wild. Maybe it'll make an appearance in Standard with this kind of card. Sure, or even you're just you're just drawing cards. Like drawing cards is great. So if you just draw cards from turn one until turn four, you're gonna get a lot of Wisps. Yeah, I mean pe people associate you know having a lot of cards with Warlock, for example, because yeah. you're drawing cards really early on. But Druid actually has a ton of card draw itself. Yeah. So this hand Druid thing is that is that uh, potentially something new here? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of something we're trying out for with the Witchwood. There's a couple of cards that play into it, uh, Witchwood Apple, Whispering Woods, and so we'll we'll see exactly how that works. It's a you know it's a 4 mana 7-7 seven, seven if you're doing that. A few of those are pretty <laughs> oh, good. I, I didn't even think about that, playing the 7-7 seven, seven, uh, worth of Wisps. Yeah. Um, and, and I do like the pun, again, I see what you did there, the Whispering Woods with the uh, yeah. Wisps. Nice. It's a little bit like Dark Whispers. It yeah. turns out we didn't fire the guy from... From the Dark Whispers flavor text. <laughs> okay, so he, uh, he kept his job. He kept his job, and yeah. that's actually the flavor text for this card. Is is calling that out? Yeah, uh, I like the R two. It, it looks uh, looks very nice, kind of like some of those uh, Disney Pixar animation characters. But yeah, um, it's cool. It's kind of a charming character, but it's it's got that creepy wisp. Yeah. Like you're walking through the woods, and there's a will o' the wisp, just something out of the corner of your eye. I think I think it's cool. I like that. I like that. Um, we have another card here called Rebuke. Uh, so let's pull that one up. This is a Paladin spell, two mana. Enemy spells cost five more next turn. Okay, this looks really familiar, Peter. Yeah, it's a little bit like a card that's in Wild, maybe something that happened a few years yeah. ago. Yeah, this is Lothab as a spell. Okay, and it's, it's really cheap, two mana. That's, yeah. That seems really powerful to lock your opponent out of place, and you could stack them, right? You can play two in one turn, so basically they can't play anything yeah, except absolutely. for one spell if it's zero cost. And if you're doing something crazy like you're setting up a Uther combo because you want to get you know a couple of right. uh, horsemen out this turn, you're going to get a couple of horsemen out next turn, Rebuke lets you lets you set that up. It makes it really hard for your opponent to interact. Wow. Yeah. I even you you put you play the Death Knight and then you just summon a couple of horsemen and then usually you need spells like you know Blizzard or uh, you know Flame Strike to clear off some of these minions. But now you can't really play them. They're too expensive. Yeah. And even if you just get up on board, you're playing a tempo deck. You're playing an aggressive paladin mm -hmm. deck. This lets you interfere with your opponent's critical turns. Right. There's there's some kind of skill testing here too that. Uh, you have to know when your opponent's critical turns are. You have to get a read on, do they have the AoE? What are the things that I need to mess with right here? Yeah, it will, anytime I'm playing Stand Against Darkness or anything related to it, I usually want to, but considering that some of those cards will be rotating out, we'll see if Paladin can continue to push Flood as much as they are right now. But I can see that this just has very versatile use. I feel like almost every Paladin deck can justify their opponent not playing cards. Because I think yeah. that is my number one complaint in Hearthstone is that my opponent is playing cards. Right, sometimes they play me. cards, and that's, yeah. that's bad for you. That so, stinks. You know, I want them to not play cards, or Buke will stop them from playing. Right, exactly. It's, it's cool to have different ways to interact with your opponent. We have mm -hmm. Dirty Rat, we've had Lothab, Rebuke is another thing in kind of that space of, okay, I'm not going to let my opponent do something this turn, 
but they can do something in the future. So mm -hmm. it's not it's not a hard stop. We're not destroying all their mana crystals or something. It, but you know, it takes them a little bit more time to to interfere with you. Is there a you know something particularly about why like Paladin would get something like this versus other classes that also could utilize interactive spell costs like that? Yeah, I think it could have gone in a number of classes. I think Paladin says we're gonna play fair. You're trying to do spells that like destroy all my minions. That's not fair. Play some minions. <laughs> play fair. Play with me so that I can elder peacekeeper them or you know equality yeah. them, which is the ultimate in playing fair. So rebuke makes a lot of sense in that space. It's also a way to give Paladin some more interactive and sort of skill testing type cards. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of things that are proactive for them and you know flood the board, do do interesting things uh, for me. And so this gives them an opportunity to interact with their opponents, something that more warlocks or mages tend to do. Okay, and so it, it pushes them in a little bit of that space, which is interesting for them. Yeah, I'm really curious to see you know how every archetype of Paladin will use Rebuke. I think it's uh, it's a pretty versatile card for sure. Yeah, I think it's a cool card. Um, the next one we have, we're about halfway through. Wow, man, time flies by. I, this is the most fun time of the year for me. We have one called Vivid Nightmare. Yeah, this card's weird. Three mana Priest Epic. Uh, wow, really creepy. <laughs> just, yeah. there's, there's a lot going on there. He's being possessed. He's being corrupted. Who it's, knows? A, it's a very vivid nightmare. None yeah. of that's happening for real. For he's sure. just imagining. <laughs> well, Priest is my vivid nightmare, if you ask me. Right now, we'll see if this ends up uh, continuing it. It says, choose a friendly minion, summon a copy of it with one health remaining. Um, and that's that's a minion that will be damaged to one health or is yep. just going to have one health like an elder piece no no it's a, it's a damaged one health thing so if okay. you copy your Northshire cleric it's going to be a one three with two damage on it okay so you can then you know circle of or healing heal or whatever it. and draw a bunch of cards yeah you know i mean people look at uh, molten reflection immediately yeah, and exactly. then there's even actually a synonymous card with radiant elemental from journey to yeah. angoro so Maybe there's a lot of combo potential here. Yeah, and instead of Ansonitis, you're using Lyra. So, and they're all a little bit cheaper. Yeah. So it turns out, you know, Lyra, Radiant, Radiant, Vivid Nightmare, Vivid Nightmare is 10 mana. So you can do some crazy oh, stuff with that. Yeah, and then just maybe get more Vivid Nightmares or, you know, sure, more yeah. stuff to, to get cheap stuff. Or even, like, you know, we saw some Prophet Valen. Oh, yeah. You can um, do some shenanigans. Yeah, Prophet. Resurrect Prophet Valen, Resurrect Maligos. Um, so, you know, when, you, when you're looking at, like, Vivid Nightmare here, are you designing it specifically for these combo decks, or are you just kind of trying to leave it more ambiguous so, for whatever This is a pretty open-ended card. Uh, sometimes we'll have a card that we say, okay, this will probably go in this deck. This is very much the kind of card that could go anywhere. It's hard to say exact. It's not going to go into every deck. It's not going to go everywhere, but it could go anywhere. There's, you know, maybe you're doing it with Radiance. Maybe you're doing it with Death Rattle Minions. Maybe you're doing it because healing matters. You want to just draw a bunch of cards to hear Northshires. So there's a bunch of sort of weird stuff you can do with the card, and it pushes in a bunch of different directions. So I love these open-ended, I'm not sure exactly what to do with it, but it it really makes me think, like, am I doing it with Radiance? Am I doing it with, you know, app, Rotten apple bombs just because I mm -hmm. want the four health and an extra little bit of taunt? Am I doing it with Priest Quest? Maybe I'm just making a lot of Weasel Tunnelers. <laughs> Everybody needs more Weasel Tunnelers. That's right. I mean, that form of a deck actually uh, end up making an appearance in the metagame. Sure, Trying to, yeah. like, fatigue your opponent out of resources. It's wild now, so maybe it's going to be harder right. to have it fit there. But, you know, you can't go wrong with Weasels. Yeah, actually, that's an interesting point to maybe even just think about for a second here. Priest was a class that people kind of say, you know, needs a lot of help from some of the expansions once in a while. And now with Rotation out, they lose some of their best tools. They mm -hmm. still have, like, Psychic Screen. Yeah, like Weasel Tunneler. They lose some of their other better tools like Weasel Tunneler. Um, and Vivid Nightmare is, is interesting too when you consider that because people don't really necessarily think of Priest traditionally as a combo class, even though they have a combo deck right now with that Inner Fire and Divine Spirit deck. Yeah, and Big Priest is very much in that combo deck space where you're you're not doing the traditional, I'm going to play a bunch of minions out over the course of the game. Mm -hmm. It's, I'm going to cheat giant minions out and then resurrect them a lot. So that's also kind of a combo deck. You know, Vivid Nightmare is not bad if you're copying the Obsidian statues, for example. Yeah, no, I, th there's a lot of implications of how you can utilize this with spellstones to try and mm -hmm. you know increase your pool of bigger minions. But when we're losing barns and losing a couple of early ways to cheat out minions, it might be a little bit more tricky to guarantee that you're able to you know utilize this on all the big minions. I think. Yeah, for sure. All right, so uh, we have um, – we, now, this is a card that you told me that was maybe your favorite of the day, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we have Glinda Crowskin. This is a Warlock Legendary card. 
that says minions in your hand have echo. Six mana, three seven. So not the most expensive card, but uh, definitely not cheap. But it has a lot of combo potential. You look at echo and infinite you just look at infinite wisps. In <laughs> so much wisp value. Infinite wisps. So yes. much wisp value. That that's not the first thing that came to my mind. All right, fine. Infinite sea giants. So much sea giant value. There that's you go. Sea giants. Uh, man, this this card must have given you such a headache in playtesting. <laughs> oh yeah, this card's awesome. Um, yeah. So I'm not on the final design team for the you know balancing the game, more on the uh, the dreaming side. What what are the crazy things we can come up with? So I love these cards. You know, this is also open ended. What are you gonna do with this? There's all sorts of insane things you can do. Is it is it actually wisps? Is it zero cost minions? <laughs> it's. I'll tell you right now, it might not necessarily be the wisp, but uh, you you kind of brought up siege and that's an interesting thing. Siege is cool. Do you do summoning portal? Summoning portal is the four mana warlock card that makes your cards cost two less. So you go summoning portal, summoning portal, and then whatever you want. Uh, big combo. Leroy's? Like Leroy Leroy's? Jenkins. Yeah. Yeah. So you play Leroy, Leroy, Leroy. Yeah, seems pretty good. Well, uh. Hmm. It's interesting too because you know it is a little bit expensive, so you don't get to fit too much more after it. But if you can stick it, and Warlock has you know yeah, really got, good removal tools, she's to got a lot of health sticks. too. So there's a chance. Yeah. Um, how does how does this work with a discard? So say if you play a, a card like Doomguard, um, will it put the Doomguard in your hand first and then you discard it? Yep, I'm or? pretty sure that the. Uh, Echo copy comes to your hand after the discard happens. So the battle cry fires, and then uh, okay. the discard happens, and then you get your doom guard. So if okay. you had no cards in your hand, you'll just get to do good doom guards for a while. And th okay, so, and then that would mean that like if you play like Cobalt Librarian, you draw, and then I, I the believe Echo you draw first. Happen. I'm not 100 percent sure. But okay, yep. interesting. So that's so that way it's one of the things that you have to make sure to sequence properly as well to make sure uh, you're playing everything correctly to maximize your potential. But yeah, Cobalt Librarian is another card pretty good with this. Yeah. Oh, you're draw right. Draw a lot of cards. Oh yeah. Do a lot of damage to yourself. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, you know if you're in wild, you can play that that Zero Man Molten Giant a lot faster. Sure. Now. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, I mean, this card is really exciting for a deck builder's perspective, and yeah. I think this. I mean, when you, when you're creating a set of cards, um, I, I can't imagine how many processes and iterations that this card must have gone through when you guys were making it. It went through a lot. This started as sort of a top-down design, so we started with a fantasy of the sort of Baba Yaga legend, where you've got this uh, evil witch in the forest with her her walking hut and stuff. And so she actually shuffled in like her heart into your deck when she died. And so when you drew that, you could resummon her. So it was oh, the story wow. of this immortal witch in the Jeez. woods. And so that that wasn't that much fun from the gameplay side. So it ended <laughs> up pushing more in the direction of, all right, what if we made all of your your cheap creatures really, really good? So she's really one of the ones that's out there twisting the forest and cursing the things so that everything becomes kind of a creepy monster. Okay, so then that's where the echoes come from everywhere because she's corrupting everything that she touches. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So so everything is cool. scary. Yeah, no, I mean, this is a, a really fascinating card, too, and the flavor makes sense. The hard thing, shuffling into is that does that mean that, like, Glinda would have gone, like, dormant? You have to wake it up, like, the darkness? She would have actually gone away, and then when you drew the heart, you would just resummon Glinda. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I mean, that this seems a lot more, like, ridiculous, explosive stuff that would happen. Th that yeah. other version is, like, a really drawn out. It might never happen. It, it, was, it was okay. It was cool <laughs> to have this infinite minion, but... Uh, it's it's pretty exciting to uh, get to give everything echo. Yeah, um, and good things it's minions and not everything because warlock yeah, okay. has warlock has a lot of really powerful cheap stuff. So yeah, it was everything yeah. for about thirty seconds until we remember that soul, soul fire, fire exists. Is a card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I mean, so we had the hunter legendary, we've had the warlock legendary, and then the rogue legendary was revealed. So some of these legendaries are really powerful, and it seems like they really capitalize on the new mechanics. Is that yeah. something that you're trying to drive, like have these legendaries be a lot of the big vehicles for some of these new mechanics to explore? It's mostly that we have these new mechanics, and let's play around with them. What does the legendary version of Rush look like? What does the legendary version of Echo look like? Mm -hmm. And Face Collector is an example. Glinda is an example. The legendary version of what Echo could mean. And it's worth calling out that we've seen one of the rogue legendaries, but there are actually two legendaries in each of the classes. Oh, yeah. That's and right. there are two minions. Oh, th that is uh, important to point out, too. So, you know, Warlock might even get some other legendary that can really complement it or build a, a different direction utilizing some of these other things that we see in Witchwood. Yep. Cool. So uh, that brings us to our next card here. We've got uh, a few more. We've got Nightmare. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Nightmare Amalgam. Amalgam? Okay. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know, man, but... Uh, it's a little bit of everything. It's, it's it's a little bit of everything. Three mana, three four epic card. 
Uh, this is an elemental mech, demon, murloc, dragon, beast, pirate, and dotum. Yep. So just literally every tribe. Pretty much. In we just really wanted a neutral totem, and so we had to stretch a little bit to make one. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, so when so when you when this is a a card, it just acts as a permanent effect if you're holding it or it's on the field. So if you're holding this card, it counts as a dragon hold, right, for yep. other dragon synergies. And even if it's not, even if you don't have it, so if mm-hmm. you're discovering a dragon, this might be one of the options. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. If you're if you summon a random murloc, like you have a murloc knight in yeah. wild. There you go. You might summon this, uh, and and it counts for everything else too. The elementals. So if you played yep. this previous turn, you can play elemental synergies, and then uh, of course mechs buffing other mechs. Uh, the art is this supposed to try to touch everything? Like it touches every tribe here. I'm guessing just yeah. By it's it's at fantastic. It. We we asked the artist, could you please give us an elemental murloc demon totem mech thing? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've got you. And so he did. It's amazing. I don't see the pirate side of it. Oh, He's the, got an the, eye patch, the eye patch. Right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah on, on the elemental. Else. There you go. Yeah. Nice. Okay, and, and the, the it's stats fantastic. are fantastic. The stats are also really solid too. So you don't even necessarily lose too much. So you know, in arena, for example, well, it's yeah. really hard to pair synergies together sometimes because you don't get to choose what thirty cards you always want. So this could be a really important linchpin in those epic picks, or rather, they change this. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a three mana three four, so it's pretty yeah. reasonable. Yeah, and um, and then I'm just thinking about other synergies as well. Because it's a beast, and there's some class that could really utilize just beast synergy in general. Uh, I'm looking forward to see if people can make this card work. It's you know kind of a big question mark on where it fits. You know, yeah, this is another one of those cards that who knows exactly where it's going to go, but there's a bunch of different possibilities for it. Mm-hmm. And that's that's a cool place for neutral cards to end up is. I don't know exactly where this is going to go. It probably doesn't go in everything. Right. But there's a lot of decks that might try it out and might experiment. Yeah, one of the, one of the things that I I really um, like about just maybe the set in general, but specifically even just how even odds and now this mechanic works is that it touches every class differently. Yeah. So even though you might say that this is an overarching like archetype, like you know, like Reno Jackson for example, kind of made things feel very similar in the sense that you just want to play very defensive and use Reno to heal, but. Even an odd makes every class approach it very differently, and I think this is the same thing too. Each class has its own set of archetypes and tribes that for might sure. utilize Nightmare Algum differently. Yeah, for sure. Shaman might care about it because it's a totem. Priest might want it because it's a dragon. Everybody's interacting with it in different ways, and just like you know, Gan and Baku that you mentioned, mm-hmm. the, all the hero powers upgrade differently with yeah. Baku. So you know, warriors becoming more defensive, hunters becoming more aggressive. It's not pushing them in the same direction; it's mm-hmm. pushing them in different directions. Yeah. So there you go. Support. <laughs> Some pirate support, even if you don't yeah, necessarily exactly. think it's obvious. Sure. This will call out patches yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah. There you you're go. You're right. Yeah. The three man, three, four pulled out patches. Oh, and just like good times, buddy. Yep. Uh, just like the good old times. Wow. Um, so we have another card here. This one is called Witch's Apprentice. It's a one mana frog. She's adorable. She. All right. Yeah, I'm very she- open minded. It's 2018. Uh, taunt, battle cry, add a random shaman spell to your hand. It's a beast, uh, zero one. So it's kind of like the, the babbling book effect. Yeah, exactly. She, she wants Oracle, to cast a spell. Jeweled macaw. Yeah, this is one of those cards where as soon as we got the art, we knew what the stats were. Mm-hmm. It was going to be a one mana, zero one taunt. Right. We just had to figure out what the effect was that made sense. That's really funny, too, because that's what the hexed frog yeah, stats exactly. are, right? So it just kind of adds to that flavor of Shaman, just like we turn yeah. things into zero one taunt frogs. Yeah, she she didn't start out as a, as a frog. She uh, right. She was apprenticed to Hagatha, and then things went a little bit wrong. Ooh, gotcha. So Ag- Hagatha's got a little bit of a temper, huh? A, a little bit, and <laughs> she's okay when her, her apprentices do things a little bit wrong. Yeah, and um, you know, I'm thinking about some of the shaman spells. Obviously, some are moving because Ra- Year of the Raven, but some will live forever in Wild here. Um, no, no shaman spells have been revealed, right? As far as my correct uh, my collection we for have, the Witchwood. No. For the Witchwood, uh, obviously, more shaman spells would come into it. But I think people uh, look at these kinds of cards and say, "When's my class going to get something like Babbling Book?" Or well, when's it going to get something like Jewel McCaw? And there it is for Shaman, the Witch's Apprentice. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a really fun card. Babbling Book was a lot of fun. Witch's Apprentice is really fun. Which one's better? It's it's hard to tell. Sometimes you just really need that taunt body to, right. to block for a turn. Sometimes you, you want the one attack. So 
Uh, it's a pretty interesting card, and there's some cool shaman spells that you can get off of it. That's right. Um, I've also noticed that a lot of these cards just incidentally have beast tags. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. because the frog has to kind of be consistent with the other frogs that exist out there in Hearthstone. But um, it seems like there's a lot of beasts being added to the set, even in classes that don't necessarily utilize them. Like Mage, for example, has Black Cat. Mm -hmm. That's a beast. Is there any particular reason why, or is it just because it's flavor-wise? Flavor -wise. It's a little bit like Angoro, where we were doing the dinosaur set, so it made sense oh, we're going to have a lot of beasts. Right. So this is, we're doing the, the Spooky Forest set. It makes sense to have a lot of beasts out in the Spooky Forest. Okay, interesting. I, you know, I wasn't sure if there was something, uh, you know, kind of like leading towards there, because I was like, no, it's like, hmm, there's so many beasts out here. Glitter Moth, the Gloom Stag for Drew. It's like, man, all these are beasts. We but, had uh, some Beast Matters cards in Angoro. There's, there's fewer here. It's less of a theme, this set. Mm -hmm. The Spooky is more the theme rather than Beast. Okay. But it just, it happens that, there's a lot of creepy creatures out in the woods. <laughs> makes sense, makes sense. You know, Nightmare Malcolm, that's another beast. Sure, sure. Um, so uh, I guess that brings us to our last card. Yeah. Oh, man, are we already here at the end? This one, uh, I already know the name of it, but I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. Let's go ahead and just show it on screen. This is the card that people are, were looking at with uh, the reveal video when it was yeah. shown. It was the Shaman Hero card. Hagatha the Witch, 8 mana, battle cry deal, 3 damage to all minions. So, very much like the Hellfire effect. Let's yeah, very up. much. Uh, one of the things you want when you're playing a hero card is you really wish the board was clear, so she'll help you get there. Okay, uh, is is this all, all we see? No, no, we got the hero card. Okay, power. there we go. I mean, I was just like, is that it? Is it we just see the card? Uh, you know, the Witch is a passive hero power, so we don't really get a lot of passive hero powers. That's really cool. Uh, after you see a minion, add a random shaman spell to your hand. Okay. That's a lot of value. So uh, every minion essentially becomes a uh, babbling book. Yeah. Every, Great. Or every the, minion or becomes a, a witch's apprentice. apprentice. Yeah, right. Sorry. She, she's apprenticing all of your minions. Fantastic. That's uh, so. Yeah, it, it makes sense because she turned her apprentice into a frog that generates random shaman spells. Now the everything yeah. becomes everything's her apprentice. The, so the, the, it's, it's kind of cool being able to tie those together. Oh, we get to see her in action. Okay, cool. So this incidentally be very good in the meta right now. <laughs> <laughs> I see a lot of this sweet animation as well. I love it. Yeah, I love that effect. It's, it's like a great. curse the ground type of thing going on. Yeah, spooky lightning. It's cool. Ooh. Do we get like an extra bonus spell here? Oh, crushing hand. That's oh, pretty good. Okay. We got some fire sides, some crushing hands. Yeah, I, I was secretly hoping that it would reveal like another bonus spell <laughs> that we haven't seen yet. I'm like, okay, show me, show me some more of the goods. Wow. So let's let's break this down here. I think um, going back to the very core, um, shaman is the only class getting a hero card this expansion. Why is yep. that, Peter? It's it's mostly a flavor thing. We wanted ways to show off. This is the coolest character in the expansion. Hagatha is the witch of the woods. Mm -hmm. So she is very much the central character. And so we wanted a way to say, yeah, she's really special. So we made her the only hero card in the set. And so I, I think that does make her really special. She's she's cool. She's mm -hmm. got a text box. She's got a hero power. She's got five armor. You, you get a lot of value out of her. Yeah, and I, I think people won't complain since hero cards is one of the cool things um, about Knights of the Frozen Throne. I mean, probably the most cool thing, just becoming yeah. the Death Knight. Um, and people were wondering if that would make a comeback here. But I think people were also just curious, like maybe not necessarily like just about the mechanic itself, but why just Shaman? Is it just because the Witch is a Shaman? Yeah, it's because the Witch concept? is a Shaman, basically. Okay. And that was the class that made the most sense to have to have the hero card to, to be the Witch. And so... We just wanted to do the one, and mm -hmm. so Shaman made a lot of sense for it. Gotcha. And then when you kind of like break down just the hero power, like what's kind of the, the thought process of like what what the design is around it and how it kind of fits the Witchwood theme? Yeah, so we wanted to push this hero in a different direction than Thrall. So Thrall says, put me in a deck with lots of minions. I'm going to transform them all into better minions, and then you know my hero power lets me keep upgrading them. Yeah. Hagatha says, if you have a lot of minions, they're all going to die. So put me in a different <laughs> deck than the Thrall deck. Okay. And... This is more of the late game control style. Uh, I want infinite value in the late game type thing. Yeah, um, you know, we kind of mentioned that passive hero powers aren't very common in Hearthstone. No, it's basically just Valera, I think, that gives you a passive hero power. Yes, uh, definitely Valera. Definitely Valera. Um, I don't think anything else, though. There's stuff in Adventures. A lot of the Adventure right, bosses right, right. have it. But, yeah, it's basically just Death Knight Valera it, and now Hagatha. And, and you know, that that's... Because it's so open-ended, and it just feels like this this card can sometimes just win games by itself. It becomes a battle of attrition. 
Yeah, absolutely. You can get a huge number of resources out of this. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of removal, a lot of AoE in shaman spells, so that's a lot of the types of things that you're getting. Mm -hmm. You can also get spell stones. Spell stones pretty good because you're also going to generate overload <laughs> from the random spells you're getting. That's right. So that's a lot of value. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm just thinking about the shaman spells too. You kind of saw a few of them, but you know, volcano is really good. Healing rain is really powerful, and so shaman does have a lot of these good control tools. And you know, when I because I also do a lot of the tournaments mm -hmm. commentary uh, for HCT, a lot of the players do mention that shamans this past year has always been on the cusp of like a great breakout, and they feel like they have some great spells. You know, they had really good packages in Jade and Involve and Elementals. Um, maybe a card like this, with a new fresh start in the Year of the Raven, can really help them at least in standard because everyone knows how powerful shaman can be in Wild, for example. Yeah, back in the Whispers of the Old God meta, there was there was a Bog Champ deck a long time yes! ago. Yes, thank you. Uh, so, and, and this is kind of in that same space. If you're playing a super long game controlling shaman deck, mm -hmm. maybe you want some extra value to, to go with your, your bog champ shenanigans. That's awesome. Uh, and, I mean, I think it's really cool that, you know, maybe shaman gets to play or with Hagatha. I do anticipate a lot of people playing shaman or trying to open or maybe even craft Hagatha and play on day one. Um, but it's cool. I, I, I mean, I, do you, I, I, I'm going to just go ahead and ask you, are, is this going to kind of be something that you guys regularly revisit just having the idea of like a hero card, maybe appear in an expansion based around what you guys are building around the, the theme? Yeah. We're always looking at what new, what old mechanics make sense in our new context. Mm -hmm. So we, we're looking at what, what are the keywords or the mechanics that we can bring back that are cool. I think hero cards are a perfect way of capturing the flavor of the the central character of an expansion. So I think that's absolutely an opportunity for the future. That's right. And something that does make uh, Hearthstone a little bit more unique, given that they have the yeah. heroes from Warcraft, and then well, we don't no longer have those tag, but you st you're still able to be able to assume the role playing element of it. Yeah, um, you get to be Hagith, then you get to have your emotes changed. So you're gonna have you're gonna have totally new emotes that are in yeah. her voice, which is cool. Um, I do want to ask you about one thing. As uh... welcome. Oh, speaking of emotes. Very creepy as well. well her voice is excellent. It's yeah, just really well done. We should get her voice pack for Kit Bogus Dreams. <laughs> By the night. Unwise. Oh, that's rude. Oh no. The curse take you. Oh, I'm already regretting or just like resenting the idea of my opponents telling me unwise after every single card I play. Everybody, I already know, unwise, man. unwise, I know. unwise. I've been trained from a young age to already think that. Uh, Peter, wow, this was this was really fun. We've had ten cards revealed. Uh, that brings us to twenty-two. I did want to ask one final question about the you know the revisiting mechanics. Is unstable evolution going to gain like the word echo at all, or is it just kind of keeping it? It won't. Stacks? It works very slightly differently. The echo cards give yeah. back their themselves. The unstable evolution uh, copy that you get has slightly different wording on it to let you know that it's going away at the end of the turn. Echo cards won't. Gotcha. Uh, they work a little bit differently with Yogg. Uh, if Yogg casts unstable evolution, then you get the the echoed ish version right, in your hand. Right. Uh, with echo cards, it only works if you play them from your hand. There, I like there's, it. There's some like really <laughs> tiny differences between them, but no, uh, we're not going to change the wording on Unstable e Evolution. Even from the grave of standard and moving into wild, Yogg is still giving you hey. guys a, a couple headaches here and there. It's Praise Yogg. Yogg is, <laughs> Yogg is always out there. I like it. I like it. Peter, it's been really fun. Uh, you know, This is all we have in the very beginning. This cakes off reveal season. But um, I, I want to ask you, do you have any of the cards that are revealed so far that are your favorites or something that oh, you like? Oh, man, I love Glinda. I think that, that kind of open-ending deck building is incredibly cool. Mm -hmm. I think Baku is one of my favorite cards in the whole expansion. The, just being able to replace your hero power with the upgraded version. Justicar was one of my favorite cards of all time. And so yeah. being able to uh, to do that from turn one, I'm, I'm really excited about trying out some Baku decks. Uh, I think there's a lot of cool stuff that's been revealed. Black Cat's adorable. Yeah, I that's that card's just... It's, it's just so cute. Super cute. I think it's power creeping again on all the other cute stuff. Murloc Tiny, Finn, yeah. Stilford, Penguin. Step aside for the Black Cat. Yeah, Black Cat is yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff I'm really excited about. Yeah. I, I'm really excited because I, I love playing Hunter myself, so I think Houndmaster Shaw is a, is a really fun card to think about as well because Hunter's kind of had some weird identity issues, but kind of found itself towards the middle and the end of the year of the Mammoth, and I think Hunter's in a pretty good spot right now with Spell Hunter. People can still play mid-range and even aggressive forms. So I'm looking forward to see how they can capitalize on it. Uh, Peter, thank you so much for having me. Is there anything that you kind of want to say to end the stream here? No, I'm, I'm just really excited about the Witchwood. Uh, we'll start community reveals tomorrow. Uh, 
which one itself will come out in April, and you can pre-order it now. There's uh, You can get 50 packs and then 20 bonus packs when you pre-order. So uh, I'm incredibly excited about The Witchwood. It's it's going to be awesome. And thank you so much for doing this. It was, it was great having you. Uh, the pleasure is mine. It's the most exciting time of the year, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to always do it and be part of it. If you guys missed any of the cards or say you caught part of the stream, you can go to playharvestone.com with all the reveal cards so far, and then, of course, plug into the local community. It's whether it be on social media, on Reddit, etc., and just get discussing discussion about the cards going because it's really exciting. And like you said, it starts tomorrow for the community reveals with stream uh, websites. I can't wait. I, I'm really excited. Reveal season is the best season. It's so much fun. All right. Well, thanks so much, Peter. Thanks so much, Blizzard, for having us. And make sure you guys get your pre-order and stay tuned for more Witchwood updates, which will start, I believe, tomorrow for the community reveals. Until then, this has been Frodan and Peter. Thank Peace you out. so much. Thank you to everyone watching. See you guys next time.